Okay, so let's have a little introduction to the second chapter on infinite products and Tychonoff's theorem. Uh, Tychonoff's theorem is quite a tough theorem, and we're going to have a proof of that using ultrafilters, and that will be the hardest theorem in this module, the hardest proof in this module. Uh, so if you do find it a tough proof um, and find it looks a bit worrying, don't worry, there won't be anything else as hard as that in the whole of the rest of the module. Uh, so when we get there. Um, but before we get there, we'll have uh, some revision of some stuff. Uh, I want to do infinite products, and before we do infinite products, I'm going to remind you about finite products. So this should be just straightforward revision from metric and topological spaces. So how do you take a product to finitely many topological spaces? Well, let's start by taking two. Take two topological spaces, x and y, with topologies tor1 and tor2. And you want to say what topology we're going to use on the product. And already it's not completely obvious what you should do. Um, but here's one way to do it. You define curly B to be the set of all products of pairs of open sets. Well, U is open in X, so U is in tor 1. So U is an open subset of X, V is an open subset of Y, and you take the Cartesian product U cross V. And imagine you're working in R squared, and maybe U might be an open interval, and V might be another open interval. Then you'd be dealing with an open rectangle in R squared um, if you were doing R cross R. So, in some sense, you think of these as open rectangles formed by taking one open set from, from each of the previous topological spaces. But that's just uh, a rough way to think about it. Now, having done that, that B is not a topology. You don't expect B to be a topology anyway. Um, because, after all, if you uh, take a union of two products of sets, you don't normally have a product of sets anymore. You're okay for intersections. If you intersect two Cartesian products, you do get a Cartesian product. Uh, the intersection of two Cartesian products is the product of the intersections. But the, it's not true about unions. So uh, unions, you have to be careful. So you have to say that this is going to be a base for a topology. And, and you have to check some conditions about uh, that mean that it is a base for some topology, so the notion of something called a synthetic base that you may or may not have dealt with in metric and topological spaces. But the idea is that if you look at those sets which are unions of some or none or lots of these sets, so look at all possible ways to form unions of some or all or none of these sets, um, that gives you a, a nice collection of subsets of the Cartesian product, and that is a topology on the product. Now, that includes, of course, getting the whole of x cross y, which actually you can do straightforwardly anyway as one of the things in B, because x will be open in x and y will be open in y. So x cross y is actually one of these sets. And these are the sets that I would call the basic open sets, because B is a base. So these are the basic open sets. Now, of course, that's a, a little bit dodgy because there are lots of different bases you could have for that topology. And if you took a different base, then you'd have different basic open sets. But this is the standard one, and this is the base you normally think of, and then those are the sets that you normally think of as the basic open sets. And if you're working in R squared, that would be all those subsets of R squared which were a product of two open subsets of R, which includes all the open rectangles and various other messy, complicated sets. Um, and of course, as you know, that uh, most things in most open sets in R squared don't look very rectangular, and so you have to take lots of. If you take a union of lots of open rectangles, you can start to get things like open disks in R squared. Every open disk in R squared is a union of open rectangles, and so on. Um, so if you think about it, you will find that it does work, and you start to get the right sort of thing. Okay, coordinate projections. 
you've got two sets, you've got the Cartesian product, um, remember what the Cartesian product is, x cross y, remember, is the set of all ordered pairs, x is in x and y is in y, If either x or y is empty, the product is empty, even if the other one isn't. So if x is empty and y isn't, there's no, the, the product is empty, and the same the other way around. And then you've got a bit of a problem. Um, then these coordinate projections are just the empty function defined on the empty set, and they're not very exciting. Um, but assuming x and y are non-empty, then these coordinate projections are surjective. You can get to everything in either of the sets using these coordinate projections. And of course, if you work in R squared, these would be the usual projections onto the axes of a, of a typical point in R squared. So using the same notation as above, as I said, these, uh, these sets are the basic open sets. It's standard that if you put the usual product topology on, then the coordinate projections are continuous. And as long as you're dealing with non-empty sets X and Y, then the coordinate projections will be surjective onto. But in fact, this C is really the key to understanding infinite products. And the, that definition of the base that we had before can be misleading when you start dealing with infinite products it can lead you to the wrong topology. The best way to think about the product topology is you want the coordinate projections to be continuous and you don't want to make any uh, more assumption than that than, than you need to. So you look for the weakest possible topology that makes the coordinate projections continuous. Weakest possible topology means as few sets open as possible. So it's, it's like you say we want the coordinate projections to be continuous, but we don't want to have more open sets than necessary. So that forces you to have certain sets open, and then you can figure out which sets have to be open, and then you say, well, okay, that's it. That's our product topology. And that's... Uh, the right topology to use to make, well, the whole theory go through that we need on infinite products. And to make Tikhonov's theorem true about products of compact topological spaces still being compact, even when you take infinitely many of them. So, so what's this about a sub-base? Anyone remember what a sub-base is? What's a sub-base for a topology? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, with the sub-base, you can do intersections and units. That's right. That's right. Sorry? From the intersection, you can do that basis. That's right. So when you've got a sub-base, it's usually not a base yet for the topology. But if you look at finite intersections, so not, not just arbitrary intersections, but you, but you start by looking at finite intersections. Um, there's a slight issue about the empty intersection. I hate the empty intersection, but by convention, the empty intersection... By convention, the empty intersection will be the whole space. Um, but if you don't like that, then you can make that a special case. Um, but when you, the idea is that any collection of sets is a sub-base for some topology or other. But only some collections of sets will be a sub-base for the topology you're actually after. And what happens here is it's exactly the same thing. You look at every possible open subset of X and you say that the pre-image using the coordinate projection PX should be open. So you need all of these sets to be open. So that's a collection of subsets of the product. This is another collection of subsets of the product, the ones which you know need to be open because you want PY to be continuous, so pre-images of open subsets of Y should be continuous. 
So these have to be open and these have to be open. And if those are all open, then the quantum projections are continuous. So what you want is, a, is the smallest number of open sets possible where any set in each of these collections is open. And that's exactly what it means, in fact, to generate a set from something as a subbase. So this is a subbase for the product topology. I'll say more about that next time. <laughs>